I have never been more excited to be in a rainy, cold destination. <laughs> The drive into Valdez was stunningly beautiful. We've only been here for three hours and we've already had pad thai in the harbor and I'm sitting here in the front seat of the RV looking at a sea otter in our spot for the next four nights. Valdez is a beautiful port town nestled among fjords on Prince William Sound. You probably know it as the primary location affected by the Exxon Valdez oil tanker spill in the 80s. It was the perfect spot for us to hide out for a week between Tim's crazy Dalton adventure and the arrival of Tim's parents the following week in Anchorage. It was so nice to finally be next to the ocean. After being in an RV for months, driving through the center of North America, we finally reached the coast. This finally felt like the RV experience we had been looking for. We had all the comforts of home, as well as adventure and beautiful views right outside our door. Valdez is a very, very small town with only a few restaurants, a Best Western hotel, and loads of RV parks. Somehow, we managed to call the same day and get a spot right on the water at the Bear Paw RV Resort. We had to move spots due to availability after a few days in town, but there was not really a bad RV spot around. Everywhere you look, we are surrounded by mountains, waterfalls, and bald eagles. It was really nice here catching up on work. The fact that Valdez is one of the wettest places in North America meant we spent a lot of time inside. We didn't do much vlogging, hence the abnormal amount of voiceover in this episode, but we want to show what Valdez has to offer as it was one of our favorite places in the state. It's popular to take a day cruise out to the nearby Columbia Glacier. We opted out mostly because we were using this week to work and it was a little long to leave Pepper at home. We did love all of the other things in town. Our favorite was the Solomon Gulch Fish Hatchery. Every year, this hatchery releases approximately 230 million pink salmon and 2 million coho salmon. So the fish later return to the hatchery by entering the facility using a fish ladder, which carry the fish from Prince William Sound uh, upstream. This process is known as ocean ranching and it occurs every year. The amount of fish here was just astounding. This, of course, made the entire area a popular destination for other wildlife. Just up the road at other river inlets is a popular place to spot our favorite animal right off the side of the road. There's only one road in and out of Valdez, so you definitely won't miss Bridal Veil Falls and the glacier right here on your way out. Unless, of course, you'll be riding the ferry on the Alaska Marine Highway, which can take you down to Southeast Alaska or up closer to Anchorage. wonderful week in Valdez, it was time to head back to Anchorage and get ready for Tim's parents to arrive. We also ended up meeting up with a couple who had found us through our New Zealand videos. Fortunately for us, they happen to be the owners of Double Shovel Cider Company in Anchorage and we're wonderful hosts for the evening. Step one in cider making, source local apples. At this time, Double Shovel isn't on Harvest Host yet, but there is one Harvest Host in Anchorage. We would definitely recommend checking that out because surprisingly enough, downtown Anchorage had the worst RV options we've seen the entire trip. 
But anyways, another big thanks to Galen and Morgan who made our visit to Anchorage very memorable, uh, or not, if you know what I mean. Circling in on our last days in central Alaska. What, ca what part of Alaska is this? You know, the, like Alaska part of Alaska. Stay tuned for Sunday where we head to Seward with Tim's parents and kayak to the Ialic Glacier with one of the funniest people we met on the trip. Wilderness Guide Norris here to tell us about bear spray and bear harmonicas. Norris? 